Welcome to QDL. QDL is your look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. And today we are at the Hexagon Live 2022 show in Las Vegas. Uh, and we're going to look at an interesting, uh, interesting application um, of Hexagon equipment with an NDT piece of equipment, an NDT sensor on the end of an arm. And with me today is Francois Mangui, uh, president of Pragma NDT. And uh, you are a, uh, and, and Pragma is a NDT manufacturer, right? Exactly. Uh, NDT stands for non-destructive testing or NDI, NDE. Those are all equivalent terms. Uh, I'm running Pragma out of Quebec City. And uh, yes, we've started this relationship with Exagon some time ago, uh, three years ago. And uh, yes, we uh, started uh, with the CMM arm because exagon has got something unique, uh, which is the interchangeability of the, uh, of the tool that you can put at the end of the arm. And what you've done is you've created uh, uh, an NDT scanner, or NDT sensor, I guess we call it, from Hexagon's point of view, that actually goes on, uh, we've got a scanner on here right now, but the scanner would come off and an NDT, your, one of your NDT sensors would go on there instead, right? Exactly, precisely that. You can uh, take out uh, the sensors and put the one that you, uh, that you want for the job, for the NDT. You can pre-scan with a laser scan, for example, like this one. You can take it out and then you can uh, use one of our uh, different sensors. So it could be, uh, could be a sensor like this for spot weld, for example. It could be a sensor like, like this one, which is a wheel probe uh, scanning for composites. So uh, depending on, on the application, uh, we started already to have multiple sensors. Those are the ones we can reveal today, but we have plenty in the pipeline as well. And this is, what, what kind of sensor is this using? Ultrasonic? This is using ultrasonics. Those two that I'm presenting today are using ultrasonics. Uh, those are typically very high frequency acoustic transducers uh, that will penetrate the material. And that's the key part. Uh, metrology typically ends at the surface and we dive into the material to figure out what we have inside, whether there are different properties that we look for or flaws that we want to figure out where they are, how big they are, and if they are rejectable indeed. Um, in the case of this transducer, so it's a tire inside, you have water and a set of very small, an array of small transducers that are one next to the other. And they build up in real time a cross-section uh, view of your material that's underneath. So thanks to the uh, echo concept of ultrasound, uh, we ping echo back if we have any flaws or difference of materials. And based on this, we can make quantitative measurements. So we can find, for example, we can find delaminations on composites. We can find wrinkling, uh, foreign body inclusions, uh, typical things that you would find in the typical layup process in manufacturing but also for MRO, for maintenance and repair operations. Okay. And, the, and the sensors, the, the, this is, I think you told me earlier, this is a, the, a phased array uh, ultrasonic, right? Okay. It is indeed, yes. Okay. And that's, that's actually embedded in the wheel? In the wheel, so as you okay. roll, of course you can have different degree of pressure, uh, you missed a little bit of water spray. I was going to say, and, how, how do you get the goop down there? Okay. Exactly, okay. so there are different types of coupling with ultrasound, even nowadays, uh, and I cannot say too much, but there are some air coupled ultrasound as well, okay. uh, that are starting to, to pick up for certain applications, certain applications, but generally speaking, you're right, you need to have some sort of a liquid uh, coupling, as we call it to make sure the sound can conduct in and out of the material. I guess goop is the non-technical term. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so, yes, indeed. <laughs> um, so what is the advantage then of, of attaching your sensor to the end of an arm? What is that bringing to the whole measurement process? It comes down to having an absolute position. Um, right now, the, the, the deployment of ultrasound for NDT uh, is typically a manual operation where the position sensing uh, or position encoding will be um, very dependent on the human uh, uh, human factor. So, so they might grid out a part? They might and, grid out a part. Okay. They might say uh, on a linear scale, I'm starting ear to go to ear, but what is ear? <laughs> right. So unless it's documented or yeah. photographed or very, very careful, it's, it's a quite complex and, and, and possibly quite dramatic uh, mistakes that can happen from there. So with an hexagon arm, uh, you can have absolute encoding and that allows you from multiple scans to multiple scan or with a prior digital twin that you laser scan, now you really see the shape of your part. It makes it very difficult not to position the NDT information right where it should be on the part, and that's the magic. Because I can say, it, without something like this, once they, even if you were doing a manual operation and they detected with ultrasonic, they detected in uh, uh, some sort of uh, subsurface fault, they would what, maybe mark it with a 
chalk or something, they, a grease pencil or something, they'd mark you, you where You would get where an is, entire so. spectrum of, okay. uh, of uh, manipulations at that yeah, point. Could little be a, dot on uh, there, It yeah, could yeah. be a marker, a yeah. paint shot, could be, uh, yeah. yeah, anything, as you mentioned, depending on the industry as well. Um, yeah. it, it really varies from operator and, and practices depending on, on uh, yeah, the manufacturing and so on. So here what happens, like, in, I want to repeat this because this, this I thought was the interesting part. You would take something like this, a laser scanner, and you have your, you have your part here, so you would fully scan the part. Now you've got your, your dimensional bit in, in, your, uh, uh, in your software. Now you go back, you replace the scanner with the NDT, and it's aligned. Now, because that's part of what Obviously. Hexagon does, right? So now you're going to do that same scan with the NDT and it's going to overlay it on top of your, your part mesh and you're going to see exactly where that fault is at. You see exactly where it is. It's perfectly registered, as we say in 3D space, so perfectly registered where it okay. should be. Um, there's no manual fiddling. And moreover, if you have very large areas to scan, uh, that removes the need for manual stitching of all the passes you would make on a typical paint brushing right. C-scan machines okay. as we call them. So, so the overlay, because you have the, the liberty, the freedom right. to actually go where you, how you want to scan it, depending on the radius of curvature and so on. So you can just go at it and everything's going to be all mapped where it should be on the 3D part. You know, stitching, I hadn't, that wasn't something I thought about. So anybody who's used uh, you know, the arm and, and the software knows that you can do very large parts, you just keep scanning. You might leapfrog if you need to and keep scanning and stitch it together. That still applies even with this. Exactly, okay. your calibration, for example, you refer to leapfrogging or yeah. gridlock techniques and things yeah. like that. Um, your calibration that you do, the three or four point calibration, yeah. stands also, uh, you just need to replace the transducer and you're good to go. You can okay. now do NDT. So when you're done with that, you get a color map. Most people are familiar with the color map, normal, let's say scanning or uh, whatever type of uh, surface metrology you're doing. You get a color map which shows uh, measurement deviation or, or dimensional, I should say, dimensional deviation. The color map they get from, from your scan is going to be show something a little bit different, so explain that. Indeed, in NDT, and it's really not unique necessarily for this, but the convention yeah. goes by that the uh, gradient of color, the colorization that you have, uh, represents either the amplitude of the flaw or the feature that you image, uh, or the time of flight. Time okay. of flight being yeah. the depth basically a penetrate the depth or when you, uh, where you found uh, the flaw or the indication as we call it. Okay. So yes, it's, it's a little bit different, uh, but it's still a, a clear indication as an imaging of where you eventually have a problem and it goes back to the same principle as in metrology. If you see the red, for example, you're in trouble. Okay. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's talk about the integration with the arm because I thought this was interesting. I, I, honestly, I mean, maybe there's another one out there. I've never seen it. I've never seen uh, uh, you know, a traditional, you know, NDT, ultrasonic, eddy current, whatever, mounted onto uh, uh, another 3D metrology device. So I understand you guys worked with Hexagon, basically what they share, what's necessary for the interface, and then you develop the matching interface on yours, and then they just come together, and that's really simple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In principle, when, we, when it all started, uh, both companies saw the, the opportunity so yeah. based on the opportunity, um, Exagon was willing to collaborate and provide the information we needed to be able to design the, the industrial design and mechanical engineering of the, uh, the interconnect of the transducers. Um, of course, that was an impulse from the beginning and uh, we've been surfing on this for the further more transducers that we've been designing uh, since then. As we go over time, of course, the, ultra, uh, the um, software component was also very important. We connect in real time with the, uh, with the arm, so we gather the real time absolute six degree of freedom position that we attach in real time within our instruments and software workflow so that you can never dissociate then after, so once a file, an NDT file is recorded, there's always this very basic principle that you never edit that file ever again because it's down to liability, of course. Right, right. So this attachment of the, real, the absolute position is done forever after that for traceability purposes. Um, is this product on the market? It, it is indeed, actually, this one. This one is kind of launched. Okay. Uh, so this one is a little bit uh, special. It's got, uh, it, instead of being a row, an array of transducer, it's actually a matrix of okay. high frequency, uh, small transducer, like little niblets, okay, if okay, you want. Okay. And they all send out energy, but they can generate an actual image 
uh, like a top view, if you want, of, of your spot weld. Okay. So it can actually tell you uh, the, the five or six typical flaws that you would get for a spot weld. And there you go, you just attach this and... And again, you attach it to the arm. And, exactly, and, and, okay. it's the same latching yeah. principle. Yeah. You attach this to the arm and, and you're good to go. And then for the first time, as you might do some gap uh, analysis or things like that with the arm already or some you know, car door metrology or things like that. Now we can snap this on and you can do also your spot weld uh, validation on the flight with the same technology that people yeah. currently use, the Exagon arm, of course. So you, this, is, this is ultrasonic. Are you looking at using the same, uh, the same idea with eddy current or any of the other yeah, Yes, indeed. I, I, uh, yes, we, we are definitely, in terms of R&D, uh, working on a number of, as I told you, a, a number of new transducers that will okay. soon be released. Uh, part of that is, of course, uh, eddy current technology, which is kind of interesting because uh, eddy current is for um, film type detection, sure. so it's really at the skin uh, of the uh, of the part, yeah. so that uh, sometimes with visual inspection, you, you may, depending on lighting, be able to see up to a certain smallness of yeah. a flaw, but anything that is subsurface or open surface, but of very small size, will be very easily catched by, uh, by caught, actually, by um, by eddy current in a very, very sensitive, uh, very sensitive manner. Very often you need to dial down the sensitivity because it can find a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot. Um, <laughs> so what, what's, so for this product here anyway, what is basically your market? The market uh, that uh, we focus on is definitely manufacturing for aerospace, automotive. We also have applications in nuclear, in wind energy as well. Those are the key markets that we, uh, that we focus on. Obviously, there are some, some um, benefits also in other markets like oil and gas, for example, typically for in-service inspection. Um, but of course, it is true to say that the arm is already well penetrated in those uh, markets that I just named, the, the automotive, the, uh, the aerospace, and so on. So it's a natural fit to, to kind of surf on existing installed base of those arms, as well as new, uh, new people getting attracted to, uh, to, to this really this, this great uh, Swiss knife of a CNM arm, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Francois Mengui, uh, President of Pragma. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate Real it. Real pleasure, Derek. And that is the end of today's uh, QDL. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Uh, if there is other cool equipment you want to see, just let us know. You can email us at qdl at qualitydigest.com and um, I'll do my best to get them on the show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next QDL. So long.